Thank you. 
This is the day that the Lord has definitely made. Amen. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 God has blessed us to behold the dawning of a, a brand new day. Today is the Sunday. Also, I say that whoever come up with that, uh, come up with the topic and the, uh, the, the scripture uh, of the first sermon that I preached here when I came uh, that first Sunday in February. That, that information is uh, uh, worth $100. Amen. And we'll, we'll do that, amen, at the closing of uh, the service. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go ahead and get our blessing of the offering out the way. Amen. I trust that those of y'all who came in, amen, whatever gifts that you had intended to give to the Lord, uh, you gave it to him. Amen. Uh, if not, uh, our deacon is here uh, with the offering plate. Amen. Amen. Whatever God has put on your heart to give, amen, you give it. Amen. amen. If he hasn't put it on your heart to give it, and you uh, are going to regret giving it, uh, God would rather you not give it because he said in his word that he loves a cheerful giver. He said he don't want us to give grudgingly nor of necessity. Amen? Amen. He don't want you to be feel like you, you're compelled to give or, you, or, 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 or feeling sorry that you gave. Amen? Amen. God wants you to be happy and excited that you are able to give back to him Amen, a portion of that which he has given unto you. Amen. Uh, I, I see a hand back there uh, that want to contribute, that want to give to God. Amen. 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 Uh, and most believers, if they if they grow, if they continue to grow. Amen. They already, they be thinking about what they going to give God as soon as they get their hand on something. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here have that mindset? As soon as you get your hands on something, you think about what you're going to give God. First. Amen. When you make out your budget. Amen. See, a lot of people don't know that. God is supposed to be the first thing on your budget. Because guess what? You couldn't meet a budget and he don't give you nothing to meet it. Come on, man. Am I right? Amen. Nah. That's supposed to be the first thing on your budget, on your list. Cable and and when you got cable, water bill, light bill, uh, 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 if you got a, a house that you're buying, you got mortgage or your ring, that the first thing on that list ought to be the one who enabled you. To meet all the rest of those things. Amen. I just want to throw that in uh, in passing. Father, let's, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. Lord, even in trying times, you're still good. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for everyone who gave and those who had it in their hearts to give, but not the means. And Father, we pray for that individual who's struggling with the idea of giving. Master, that you would, Lord, place in their heart not only the means to give, but the heart and the desire to give. And Father, we pray that you would bless this offering. 
even as you did the two fish and five barley loaves. Master, make it more than enough. And Lord, we pray that you would return it to everyone who contributed to this offering. Lord, a hundredfold is in the precious, marvelous, matchless, and highly exalted name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Amen, y'all. I need y'all to pray for me today. I, you know, yesterday we laid the rest of my first cousin, uh, who, who was not only my first cousin, but he was a confidant, a best friend, a brother beloved, a fellow pastor, a mentor, all of those things. We, matter of fact, we talked uh, pretty much every day. We talked. Uh, Sometimes my cousin would talk to me from Lake Charles all the way back to Rosa. He would talk to me. And, and, and you know, we just, it, it, this morning I was on my way, I just left Burger King and got on the interstate on the way here. And, 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 and I did something I ain't did in years. Cried. That's what I did. I cried. And for some reason I couldn't stop. I didn't stop crying. I, I tried to call my sister, then I stopped and I called her again and I talked to her and, and after they prayed for me, I was all right. So it's, it's okay to cry. It's okay to grieve. You know, uh, you know that, that's just how life is. And, and, and let me tell you something, pastors have their grief and their hardship and, and all that kind of stuff too. And, uh, and, 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 and now we have to, we have uh, Sister Selena, amen, to mourn. Uh, she was one of our, our heavy hitters. Amen. We, I was talking to one of our deacons uh, early in the week and he was saying, man, we got, we got a lot of positions to, to, to fulfill because uh, she wore a lot of hats. Amen? Amen. She did a lot of things. And, 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 and it was a joy for her to do it. Amen? Amen. When you're doing stuff for the Lord, it ought to be a joy to do it. And she took joy out of teaching. She took joy out of preparing the Lord's table. Amen? Amen. She took joy out of that. And, uh, and let me tell you something. I'm, I miss her already. Man. No sense of me telling no tale. I, I miss her already. Wasn't she, was she the, I know she was on the Pastor A thing. Was she over it? No, she was the treasurer. She was the treasurer? Yeah, she, I know she was something on the Pastor A committee. I didn't know in particular what she was, but I know she was on it. And so, man, now y'all y'all keep Brother Clinton lifted up as well as her children. Hey, Amen. Y'all keep them lifted up. And pray. her sister, who's, who sits over here when she's here, uh, Sister Perry, yeah. keep her lifted up. And, and you know, talking to uh, Deacon Charles and others, I be finding out who can't be. <laughs> Don't you know, I just found out that uh, the, the male usher, Fred. Brother Fred, I just found out that was your brother. You do that, Charles? <laughs> Look at that, she's my wife right here. <laughs> That I didn't know. I've been here three years. I didn't know that they were y'all two brothers. And I said, God, all of you don't know. Good thing I ain't never said that about you to him and him to you. <laughs> but let me tell y'all something. Pastor don't talk about people. I don't do all that crazy stuff. You know, if I got something to say about somebody, I'm going to say it to them. I ain't never been scared to say what I got to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I, I, I was, I seen them at your house. I just said, well, maybe they've been friends a long time. I got there. That's your brother. You know, I, I didn't find out until I left your house. Wow. He told me, he told me y'all got all boys. I left y'all, when I left y'all, I didn't left your house and talked to him the next day. And I, I, and he said, he told me that y'all were brothers. I said, what? Well, I, I, I didn't know that. I know not know. Who else is here kid that I don't know nothing about? <laughs> Look, I was, I was here a while before I found out that Sister Lena and Brother Norman was siblings. I said, what? Siblings? Y'all, y'all siblings? 
you know, I guess, you know, you can just, you just, you know, you, you just don't know. Amen. 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 But that's, that's, you got to be careful who you, my, and my wife said all the time, who else, who, who is not kidding around here? That's my wife said, you know, all the time. But, uh, but laughter is good for the soul. Amen. It helps you, it helps heal you. You know, it's good to, to laugh sometimes. Amen. 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 Well, we're going to have a couple of songs uh, from our praise team. And then after that, I need you to meet me. We're getting back on our study uh, dealing with uh, uh, understanding, appreciating, and being compelled by the mercies of God. Y'all know that's Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. We're going to get back on track with that because we're not finished looking at the mercies of God. So after we get a couple of uh, songs from the praise team, uh, we'll get to Romans chapter 12, our, our controlling text, and I want to look at a little something in Romans chapter 5. Amen? Amen. Amen.
They, when they when they going up for a church, first thing they think about the church I got now and the income I can get from the other. I'll be all right. They go count how much money they can make pastoring three full churches. You know, or, or they'll leave a church over here because that church that got a bigger salary to give them. That's hiring. That's what they are. They're hollering. That's what they're more concerned about what the church is going to pay them than, than, than what God called them to do. God called you to pastor. Okay? The church don't give you nothing. God called you. That's who you're supposed to look for your reward from. Amen? Amen. You ain't supposed to be mad if they don't treat you right and all that. They didn't treat Jesus right. <laughs> and he came to die for the world. And they didn't treat him right. They mistreated Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. So keep that in mind. Amen. Uh, pray for that church. And pray for Pastor Funches. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he, last I heard, he was in the hospital. So pray for him. Be everywhere. That he is. So pray for him. Name his name. Pastor Lafayette Funches. Call his name. Pray for his wife, Sister Rosa. And pray for uh, their church family. Keep them lifted up in prayer. Because uh, he, he's an older fellow. He's in his 70s. Y'all, he's been here before. Y'all met him. Some of you all uh, know Pastor Funches. So pray for him. Keep him uh, constantly before the Lord. He's, he's one of our uh, giants that have been standing on the wall a long time. And so I need y'all to, to mention him uh, in prayer. Amen. 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 Do that for me. Do that for me. Mention him in prayer. I, 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 I'm very fond of, uh, of Pastor Funches. Very fond of him. So uh, look, look what in the word in Romans chapter 20. Romans chapter 12. Like I say, most of y'all should be able to. He to quote these two verses, amen, without, without even looking at it. I beseech you, uh, therefore, brother, y'all there? Yeah? Yeah. By the mercies of God. Y'all see that? Yeah. He said that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, y'all see that? Yeah. Unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might be able to prove what is that good, what is that acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God. You may take your seat. And I, I, since we have been in a, in a little while uh, since last year, I think the last time I preached on this was in November. And so I want to, I just want to, in, in, in reviewing, I just want to do a little, a little bit of reviewing, to do a little bit of refreshing uh, of our minds. Now, uh, Paul, as he writes this letter, he, we're, we're in the 12th chapter. Now, he, he, he said, I beseech you, therefore, and whenever you see the word therefore, you want to know why therefore, or what therefore is therefore, or wherefore. Why is that there? It connects what was said previously to what he's getting ready to say. And so he, he, he's saying in light of everything that I've said from chapter 1, I, I want y'all to keep in mind that, that, that when these epistles, Epistles are letters. I want y'all to keep in mind that when these letters were originally written, they did not have chapters and verses. It was a letter like you would write a letter to somebody. And when you write a letter to somebody, you don't say paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and all that kind of stuff. You just commence to write. Now you might, you may use paragraphs, or you may not use paragraphs. It, it, it depends on how grammatically astute you are. That's what it depends on. It depends on how well you are in 
understanding grammar and the English language and how to use commas and, 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 and quotation marks and periods and, and all that kind of stuff. How, 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 how you're able to move from thought to thought. How are you able to do that? You have to really be uh, grammatically astute to be able to, to write a letter perfectly. Amen? Some people just write a letter and all the words on there, people can understand and have that. But there are rules to, 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 to writing and to grammar. There are rules. A lot of people don't follow them, them rules. And really, if you communicate with people who, who care about you and love you, you don't really need to because they're not going to make a big deal out of it. But if you deal with uh, 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 what you would call dogmatic uh, educators, they're going to they gonna, they gonna criticize you if you write, if you write, you don't write right. You don't use commas the way you need to use them and all that kind of stuff. They're going to they gonna say, look at that, they, they must don't know that. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's those dogmatic educators. They do that. But, but if, you're not, if, a, if a person is not a dogmatic educator, they're not going to criticize you for not putting certain things where they go. Well, I, I'm saying that to say this. When this letter was written, it didn't have chapters to divide things. It didn't have verses and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes to, to get the proper understanding of things, you have to forget about the chapters and the verses. Now the chapters and the verses are there to separate thought and they're there so we'll be able to remember in our mind when we read something that. Oh, I read some such in chapter 12 or chapter 15. That's why it's there. Now if you didn't have chapters and verses and all that, if you wanted to show somebody something, you probably had to go through the whole letter and say, I know I saw this in your summer, hold up. I'm going to find it, chill out. But see, now, in your memory, you can say, well, it was in chapter 12. It was in chapter 11. It was in this or that. And that was the mind who translated the Bible when they translated to make the study of the Bible more simple, to simplify the study of the Bible. But 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 when you when you when you once you know that you should be able to study the Bible and not be uh, 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 impeded by chapters and verses. And so and so Paul when he writes this letter, he's letting us know that everything I said from the beginning of this letter, which is chapter one, all the way up to this point, was to prepare you to do what I'm asking you to do right now. And he asked, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, in light of everything I've previously said, this is what I want you to do. He said, by the mercies of God. That's, and, and the mercies of God is set forth in chapter one all the way up to this point. And, 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 and in order for you to do that, in order for you to be equipped to do that, in order for you to be compelled to do that, in order for you to have the desire and to understand the importance of doing that, you have to know what he said in the previous 11 verses. That's why understanding the Bible and studying the Bible is so important. How are you going to please the one who should be pleased, that's God, if you don't understand or find out what pleases him and then be motivated by motivated to please him by what he did for you. Because God has did some things that we have to take our time to study and to learn and to understand. Let me tell you something. Salvation carries with it a whole treasure chest of benefits. I'm talking about stuff that you're going to continue to find out until Jesus comes back. You're going to continue to find out. That's why he said, I beseech you. The word beseech means to beg. I honestly beg you. That's what Paul is doing. Because Paul don't want to understate the importance of presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable sir. He don't want to understate that. And notice he said, I beseech you by the mercy of God. 
there are innumerable mercies that God uh, has, has showered us with in Christ Jesus. Because let me tell you something, the fact that God saved anybody is a mercy. Nobody deserves that. God can wipe out everything he created and he don't have to answer to not one soul. He don't have to answer to nobody. He just say, well, I'm tired of having creatures. And just, just like he said, let there be, he can say, let there be not. If that's some kind of, if that's ground. If I, if that's, if I can use that kind of ground. Let everything be gone. That's how powerful God is. He can say that. It's with the stroke of one little sentence. He can do that. God can do that. Because he's God. And let me tell you something. That ought, to, that ought to make, that ought to humble you. That if God can step out on nothing and create everything that exists, he can also step out on, every, on something that exists and make it out of nothing. He can do that. And that ought, to, that, ought to, that ought to have you in awe of him. That ought to humble you and let you know that I exist only because of his desire that I exist. Yeah. He wants us to exist. And so Paul picks up the pen. He said, I'm begging you. I'm, I'm earnestly begging you by all these mercies that I discuss. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to Christians then, and he's talking to Christians of all ages. He said, I, I, I earnestly beg you that you present your body. Young people to present your body. That it's just like if you was presenting a gift to, to your mother or your father. It, it, it is to put it in their possession. To utilize it as however they want. So God is saying, put your body. And when you talk about your body, he's talking about everything. Every part of your body. Put your eyes in God's possession, and let God use your eyes. Nobody else. He said, let the, when you talk about your body, you talk about your ears. Put that in God's possession. Let him use your ears. Don't let nobody dump no foolishness in your ears. When they, when they try to dump foolishness in your ears, you need to get away from that. Say, I don't want to hear that crap. That's what you need to say. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That's what you tell them. Don't let nobody dump their ideas in your mind. When he talk about your body, that means he said present your body. He talking about your entire being to him. And look what he, let, 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 let me qualify for him accepting. Let me qualify what it takes for God to accept you, your entire being. He said present your body a living sacrifice. That means you alive, so that means you got a choice. Dead animals don't have a choice. You alive, so you got a choice to, to present your body or not present your body. And so look what he said. He said, first of all, holy. Now let me help the children understand what, he, what God means by holy. When something is holy, that means it's exclusively for God. And let me give y'all a, 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 a simple example. And it, this all to help. All of y'all at the age y'all are at now. Y'all brush y'all teeth. I'm more sure your mom is after y'all brush y'all teeth. I know that. Y'all got, and y'all got toothbrush, huh? Now tell me something. When you get through with your toothbrush, do you hand it to your brother or sister or somebody in you? That <laughs> toothbrush is exclusively what? For who? For you, right? You don't, you don't share your toothbrush, huh? That's, that's yours. Your mama ain't trouble when you look. When you get through that toothbrush, let your brother use it. Or let your sister. She didn't say that, did she? She said, that's your toothbrush. And you and, and, and gave your brother one or your sister one. Right? So that's exclusively your toothbrush. And your mama don't take her toothbrush or your dad don't take his toothbrush. When they get through with it, they have to you. Do that? That's yours. That's what God is saying about your body. God said, your body is supposed to be presented to him and exclusively his. And it's not supposed to be used for anything other than what he approved it to be used for. Y'all got that? Man. That's what it means to present your body holy. That means it, it's, it's exclusively 
belong to God and you can only use it by what he approves. My body is supposed to be just, he approved me to use my, for my wife to utilize my body. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm approved to utilize her body. Now anything outside of that is a violation of the rules and regulations that God set forth for me to use my body. Because guess who it belongs to? If I'm presenting to him, who is for? God. If your mom and daddy give you that toothbrush, who that's for? You. That's yours to you till they decide you need another one, right? That's yours. That's the suit. You ain't gonna take your toothbrush and your best friend spend the night over there and let them brush it. They should have brought their nails when they check. <laughs> get you some toothpaste and put it on your hands and brush it. <laughs> Till you get home, he goes to the mouth wall. God, you know, that that would do that. You ain't let them brush your teeth. They teeth with jaws. You, you ain't supposed to do that. That's bad hygiene. And so I just painted, I just put that picture out there to help these babies understand. If you're going to present your life to God, the first person you ought to not let use your life, your body, is the devil. Don't let him, you, don't let him cause you to. Not listen to your mom. It's you today, so I'm gonna, a lot of stuff I'm going to address to help these babies out. Don't let the devil whisper in your ear through some other little child or whatever make you do something that your mama and daddy or any teacher or elder that's, that, that has authority over you have you do something you ain't got no business doing. Y'all got that? Don't do that. that, that let me tell you something. It may not, it, the person may not look like the devil. But the devil can use him to get you to do something you ain't got no business with. Taking stuff that they chose, cutting up and acting up in class, talking when the teacher say don't talk in the class, that kind of stuff. Taking something that don't belong to you, that ain't, that, that's the devil. God ain't gonna never tell you to take something that's not yours. God will never tell you that. Anybody who, if you see somebody else Taking something that's not theirs, you don't have no business getting involved in that. And if they try to give it to you, you're supposed to tell them no. That's not mine, I'm not taking it. You're supposed to tell them that. Y'all got that? that? That's what it means to present your body to God. Just like your toothbrush belongs exclusively to you, that means your body, your life, belongs exclusively to to God. It's his. You ain't gonna, let me tell you something, you ain't gonna say no bad word about your mouth. You gave your mouth to God. Right? Your body, your mouth, ain't got support in your body? Nah. So when you say something you ain't got no business saying out there, you take it with bone to God and use it how you want to use it. That means you really ain't presented your body as a holy sacrifice. Right? If you if you gonna take your your mouth and do what you want with it, that's what it means to present your body. Let's say your body. They're talking about the total you. Your body is soul, spirit, and flesh. Body. Right? That's what your body is. That's what it is. So when Paul calls on us, he he say he say he say present it as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reason. This ain't no shout message. Now, let me tell you, this, this is not shout you. I'm going to tell you why it ain't no shout message. Because God is call, God calls on us to be what we not. God, I mean, don't miss this. Don't miss this. God calls us to be what he already declared us. When you accept Christ as the Lord of your life, God has already declared you holy and acceptable. He's already declared you righteous. Now he wants you in, in exchange for his generosity. In exchange for his mercy, he wants you to be what he already declared you to be. When I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life and the Savior of my soul almost 21 years ago, that particular day wasn't nothing holy about me. Wasn't nothing righteous about me. Now, I was righteous and holy in my position. But in my condition, I was a whole another person. Because I, for 31 years, I had lived as a hell. 
For 31 years, I had lived as a, as a child of the devil. So how in one day I'm going to live as a child of God? How am I going to do that in one day? No, it took, it took some practice. It took some rising and some falling. It took some failing and some making of some mistakes, making some bad decisions. It took God disciplining me. It took a whole bunch of things, amen, to get me to the point where, where, where I can say what I, I, I'm saying, I'm sharing with y'all. Now, 20 years ago, I never would have told you none of this because I wasn't doing none of it. I was a slave to, 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 to my passion. I was a slave to it. So, so I'm saying this to you. If you're going to uh, 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 be a, a person that, 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 that presents your body, and that's what it is. It's a sacrifice. In other words, basically what you're doing, your ultimate sacrifice is to take what God gave you as a blessing and give it back to him. Let me give y'all a, give you a picture of, and and this, 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 this will help the grown folks understand. Let me give y'all a picture of what I'm talking about. How many of y'all remember uh, Abraham and his wife, Shep? Anybody here haven't read that story in the Bible? Yeah. Anybody who haven't? Now, if you read that story in the Bible, you know Abraham was 100 years old. And his wife was 90 when she gave birth to a son, right? Y'all remember that? Yeah. God had promised him this child when he was 75. So it took 25, God promised him this when he was already an old man. He, he was 10 years old and white, right? so she was 65. Now we know today, in, in today's, even with the technology we have now, uh, uh, a sister at 65 years old will forget about a baby. Am I, am I right? Am I talking right? She will forget about a baby. With the technology we got now, I don't care what no scientists and doctor and all that kind of stuff talk about. Once a woman gets 65, she not man can still, you know, produce. But I'm talking about a woman. But when, when God promised him a son that he would have many nations by, he was 75 and his wife was 65. And God waited 25 years before he brought that plan into fruition. And then after they had the baby, don't miss this, after Isaac was born and was a little lad, he probably was maybe, I, I, would, I would estimate someone close to 20 years old, when God told him, Take your son, your only son, that the promise, this, he, God promised this child him. And then he turned around and told him, take him and go kill him. Now that, 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 that shows me a picture of you taking the most precious thing you have and giving it to God. God gave it to you. He gave us life. That's what basically what Paul is saying. He said, I beseech you by the mercy of God, take your body, take your life. That's all he said. I just sum it up in one word. Take your life, the life that he gave you. Take it and give it back to us. That's what he's saying. That's basically what God is saying in this. Now, you know, the young people, I don't expect them to really understand that dynamic right now in the age. They're, they're, you know, some of them may, some of them may understand sooner than others. But we need to understand that dynamic. God said, look, I gave you a free will. I gave that to you. I gave, I gave you free volition. Now, what I want you to do is take it and give it back to me. That's the biggest sacrifice that you can give, God. It don't get no bigger than that. It don't get no bigger than that. You can, you can say, you know what? And that, that don't mean not pursue uh, a career and all that kind of stuff. That don't mean that. It just means that that career should not bump heads with what, you, with what God called you to do. It shouldn't bump heads with that. If you need to live, you need to operate and function in this world. You need to do that. But in the course of living and functioning and operating in this world, do, do, does that cause you to compromise the principles that's necessary with being, to being a child of God? There are some principles that a child of God must live by. 
And you're not supposed to allow nothing to cause you to compromise those things. Let me say, for any, let me, I'm going to give you a prime example. Say I'm, I'm a child of God, I want to live right. And I got children I got to take care of. They small, say they ain't, say they small. My children grown, except one of them. But say they small. And I need to survive, but I, 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 I call myself a child of God. And I, I say, okay, well, I need to survive. I'm going to sell some drugs. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go sell some drugs. Now, do, 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 do my need to provide for my children warrant me going to that extreme? No. No, I need to go get a, a job to provide for my children that does not go against the right, to go against the, the privileges and the standard of being a child of God. I need to do what, what, what will not compromise. Because how can I share with somebody my relationship with God if I'm selling drugs? How can I tell them how good God is and he's a way maker, a burden bearer, and, and I love the Lord, and every time they see me, I'm on the corner with a bag full of drugs. Slam. Talking about I love God. They got me. Don't you know there are some people with that kind of mindset? Oh, God is good. See, I believe God, but they sell more drugs than the, than the pharmacy. I'm serious. They got them crazy like that. Doing all kinds of stuff. And the first thing they want to say, God know my heart. That's what they say. And that ought to frighten them, that God know their heart. That ought to make them get their mind right. So they, yeah, God do know your heart. He knows you love something in this world more than, him. more than you love him. And see, that's what the picture of, 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 of Abraham sacrificing Isaac. It showed that Abraham was willing to sacrifice the most precious thing he owned. He, in other words, he was showing God, and God already knew, but he, he, he allowed that to take place so we can see the example. He was showing us that he loved God more than anything else in the world. And let me tell you something, the only way you can do what Paul is asking you to do you need to get to the point in your life that you love God more than your own life. I'm going to say that again where you hear You need to get to the point where you love God more than you love your own life. He gave it to you. It's a creative thing. He gave it to you. So why would you value it more than the one who gave it to you and he can take it away if he wants to? And so Jesus said, if a man don't love, don't, don't hate his, his mother, father, sister, brother, and his own life, he's not worthy. That's what he said. Ain't that what the Bible said? Amen. He's not worthy of me. That's right. It don't mean you walk around, you know, uh, abusing yourself and all that kind of stuff. He just said, don't put your own desires before him. Don't do that. Don't put your own desire before him. You know, say, say somebody come to you, you know, and they, they got this going on, but I know some people that personally make this here happen. Say, say they got some people who, who know how to get, uh, uh, say you like to fish, and they, you know some people who, 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 who know how to steal boats. Smack brand new, that ain't never hit the wall before. They, they know how to do it. They go, they get you any boat you want. You tell them, I want yeah, I want, I want a, a 40 foot this, that, and other with twin engines on the back of it. With a red, with a, with a, with a, with a, 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 a thing where I can pull me a big fish. You know, you tell them to get you one of them. They, 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 you know, they tell you, well, look, it, the boat normally costs about $150,000. Man, you give me $15,000, you can it. Now, you know, you, ain't, you can't buy no 15, no boat like that for that amount of money. But, and you're a Christian, you know that. But you love both. Now the question, now you faced with the temptation of do you love fishing and, and, and material things more than you love God? Now ain't nobody not gonna know about you getting this boat, but you the person you buy it from and go. And let me tell you something, this is a real life scenario that you can face. Many of us face it all the time. And the question is, do you compromise? 
Do you love God who see you? He see you, God see you. And he may have allowed you to come to that situation uh, so you can, you can, so you, he already know whether he love you more or not. So you can gauge the extent of your love for God. And that's what Paul is saying right here. He's, t- he's letting them know in, in light of everything God has done for you, I'm asking you to present your body and I'm asking you to put God first in everything, even your own life. That's what Paul is saying to them. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly begging. Paul said, I did. Let me show you how Paul, let me give you a scenario that Paul faced. Paul was faced with going to uh, going to Jerusalem. And the man, he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And, and a prophet named Agabus told him in the book of Acts, he said, the man who this shirt belonged to, or this jacket, whatever it was, he, he, the, the man, the, the prophet took Paul's jacket mm-hmm. and tied himself up with it. And he said, the man who this belonged to, if he go to Jerusalem, he said, Shackles and binds await him. Read that in the physical guys, it, it awaits him. And so Paul, Paul, and he told all the other people telling Paul, don't go, don't go. Don't go. Now Paul, Jesus had told Paul that he was going to suffer great things for him. Paul knew that was that was God's plan for his life. That he would go to Jerusalem and that he would be arrested and then he would be brought to Rome to go before the, the, the emperor. And so Paul told them, he said, look, he said, not only am I ready to be a bomb, he said, but I'm ready to die for Jesus. That's what he said. That was his, that was his, that's what he testified. I'm ready to die. In other words, he put, he put, it, 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 you and you and I would say, well, somebody probably would told us we going out there, they're going to lock us up, we're going to get killed and all that. We were one in a whole nother direction. We caught the closest boat going somewhere, but back then that's all they had was boat to get far away. We'd have been on the first, the closest ship to another continent, trying to get away from what the prophet said was going to take place. But Paul was so sold out to the Lord, guess what he So in other words, I'm trying to get you to see, Paul is not talking about nothing he didn't practice it. Paul is he's, he's telling us what he experienced and what he practiced himself. And let me tell you something, we live in a world where you don't never know when you're going to be faced with, with, with a serious choice between your calling and your relationship with the Lord and your own self. You don't never know that. You never know when you're going to be faced with that. And, and you never know when you're going to have to see Am I serious about the Lord? Am I serious? How, how dedicated, how, 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 how big of a gaze or measure your love for the Lord? The thing is, do you love God more than you love your own life? And that's the love that God is calling us for, calling us to. Because let me tell you something, if you love anything more than you love God, the devil will use that to cause you to stop. He'll use that against you. That's why Job, y'all read the story of Job? He, t- he, told, he, told, he told God, he said, look, if you take everything Job got, he's going to curse you. Well, he took everything he, he had, right? He said, okay, well, he, uh, he, he had God asked him about Job again. And Job was still serving the Lord. He said, well, look, I'll tell you what. Nothing a man will give for his own life. I took everything he had. Let me, let me, let me, let me mess with his body. God said, okay, well, you can mess with his body. They ain't going in your hands, but you can't kill me. And so he made him sick. Real sick. And guess what? Job did Job love God more than he loved his own life. He told his wife, he said, shall we accept good from God and not evil? He said, Lord, get it. The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I came into this world naked. I'm going out of here naked. Yeah. His wife told him, let me show you how, how, how cunning and crafty the devil is. The devil always kept somebody alive 
to bring bad news. And then at the end of everything, he had his wife sitting right there. Yeah, and she looking at her husband with all those souls at the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. She, I could see, I could see Miss Jones sitting there with her head, looking at her husband like that. And he's smelling like that. Ain't no telling what he's smelling like. And if he got souls on him like that from the top of his feet, and it's oozing all kinds of stuff from it. I can imagine how he smell. And if anybody know how you smell, your wife knows how you smell. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm telling you, brother. Your wife knows how you smell. And if you ain't smelling right, they know if you ain't smelling right. And if you're smelling right, they know if you're smelling right. And so Miss Joel was probably from here to maybe the back of the church from her husband, looking at him. You know, and he stank and he sick. And the first thing she told her husband, you still maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. Now why the devil didn't kill her with all other people? He didn't. He kept her alive because he knew that he could, he, could, he could try to use her to get him to do what he told God he would do. But it didn't work out like that. Job loved God more than anything on this world. He was a rich man. But he loved God. He loved God. And so I'm saying to you, God wants us to get to the point. That's what this passage of Scripture is telling us. Until you get to the point where you love God more than your own life, the next verse, you, you won't be able to do the other, the other thing. That you won't be able to do it uh, when he's asking you to be in the, the next verse. The next verse says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind, that way you'll be able to prove. In other words, to prove, you'll be able to know if you're in the will of God. You'll be able to know. You'll be led by the Spirit of God. God will prompt you. You'll be sensitive to His voice. And you'll be able to make the right choices and the right decisions. And when, you, when you're still off course, you'll know it immediately. When I do something that I don't have no business doing, or I make a, it may not be nothing sinful. It might be just something that God feels God says it's not best for me. When I be said or done something or made a move, the Spirit of God lets me know that. He, he, I, I'm aware of that. And I, I, if I can, I try to go back and correct that. Because I, I'm trying to live a, a spirit-led life. And that's where, that's the level God wants every one of us to go, not just the preacher. Amen. God wants all of us to be led by his spirit. Yes. Yes. Those who are the children of God are led by the spirit of God. You want to be sin. Let me tell you something. The spirit of God will never lead you contrary to what's written in here. Amen. But if you don't know what's written in here, you won't know if you're being led right or wrong. That's why Bible study is important. That's why Sunday school is important. That's why personal devotion at your house is important. That's why your Bible should be open in, in, in a seven-day period. Your Bible should be open at your house. You, you got, if you come to church regular six uh, Sunday, you'd be at church. So you got six days, and if you come to Bible study, you got five days that you don't be at church getting fed from the preacher. You should have your time at home. Show God how important he is. Don't get talking about, oh, I love God, and this, that, and that. And your Bible, when you get out the car, your Bible stay in the car the whole week. And, you're, and you don't pick your Bible up again until you come to church. And if you got one at home, that, it ain't nothing but a showpiece. Some people ain't got nothing but a showpiece at the house. I ain't nobody, they don't study out of it. It's a showpiece. And I have to say that. I have to say that. That's my responsibility to say that, to challenge you. If you love, when whatever you love, you make time for it. What time it is? What time it is? 11 or 9? But I say I'm going to 15, huh? So that means I got six more minutes. Well, let me shut up. But I, I want to say this, and I'm in closing. Whatever you love, you make time for it. Amen. Am I right? Amen. That man that you think is handsome, you make time for him. 
That woman you think is fine and pretty, you make time for her. Let me go over here where the baby's at. That PlayStation 5 or whatever them games is that y'all like to play with, them phones and them devices, y'all make time for them. Make time for some Bible study. Make time for some Bible study. Y'all do that. Make, let, 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 why, let, 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 before, did, did we get those Bibles for them babies? Who all, who all, that was you, uh, who all, uh, Brother Lewis and somebody else. Y'all make sure y'all get, y'all, y'all please do that. And since I'm thinking about this, that way they can have some study time. But go ahead. Who are you pointing at? Kaylee? What, 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 huh? I see him, I see him. He, he, he was up on the game all night up. Huh? Look at him, he over there like he at home. You ain't at home, this is not the house. <laughs> this church, Kaylee. Kaylee, this ain't, this not the house. Kaylee, sorry about that, I'm almost saying your name. Kaylee, this, 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 this. This church, King. Don't, don't make me go over there and follow and talk to big, big, big to a spud. Don't let me go. Don't, don't let me go to follow and test spud. You sweeping in church. I tell you now. Amen, amen, amen. So, so what I'm saying to us, make time. You love God? Make time for him. See, I, I admire, I, that's what I admire about Reverend, Reverend, uh, uh, I'm about to call him Reverend, Deacon. He ain't like a reverend. He ain't like a reverend. He got some reverends respecting him on that 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 uh, that prayer line. You know what I mean? That Bible study line. A bunch of preachers on that. How many be on there? Huh? It be a, it be a bunch of preachers. He got a prayer from that, on the Bible study line on Friday, right? It be a bunch of people on there and some preachers. He the moderator of it. He, he invited me a few times to come and share. Oh God, that was, that's what I, look, he, this is a deacon, he's not a preacher. He's a deacon, and before the pandemic, y'all used to meet somewhere else, huh? In different houses and all that. That's what I'm talking about. That's, 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 he, 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 he taking it away from the church and doing it in more, more some family members and friends, huh? That's what I'm, that's important. That shows you that he loved the Lord beyond just in the building. Take a penny from that life, from that. Every Friday ought to have somebody in there where they say, come on, let's meet at my house. Uh, or, or some, uh, or let's get on the conference line. Now that we got the pandemic, let's get on the conference line. It's free now. It don't cost nothing. I can give you the number. They'll give you a free conference line. They'll give it to you. You ain't got to pay a dime for it. Uh, you could donate money. They'll they give you the opportunity to do that. But it's free. And you can have your people on there, and y'all can share the Bible all through the week. And that, I admire that. that. That's one of the, the biggest things I admire about you, that, that, that you, you, you were teaching deacon like, like the two in the Bible, Philip and Sheep. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us know. That's it. I, I'm finished. I've kept us long enough. Amen. Amen. A anybody, any questions or comments about anything I see? Well, there may be somebody here today. You have heard something today that convinced you that you ought to follow Jesus. That convinced you that, amen, that when Jesus come back, you want to go back with him. And if, if you're here today and you're not 100% sure that if Jesus came today, you'll be going back with him. Amen. You ought to come. We offer Christ to you. You ought to come. If you if you got if you're not 100 percent sure. If you're not 100 percent sure, you need to come up here and, 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 and do something about whatever percentage that you are not sure. You need to come up here and, and do something about that. If you want. That's something you can't play with. Because once your time run out, you can't get it right after that. I'll say you're here today and you're looking for a church home, a place 
place where you can be cared for spiritually. We a place where you can learn and grow you in your relationship oh, with the Lord. A place where you'll be told when you're off course. We you'll be told when you got off, when you get off that straight down road. You got a pastor who will let you know in a loving way that you need to get back on that road. Is there he one that's looking for a church on? Amen. You may be seated. Remember 
was preached and live was preached, that means more to me than any dollar you can give me. Any dollar. When, when appreciation time comes and all that kind of stuff, that ain't big to me. The biggest thing to me is to see the word of God being modeled in how my people live. Amen. That's, what, that's what impresses me. That's what's important to me. To see the word of God alive in your lives. That's what's important. And you retain, amen, what's necessary, amen, to be like Christ. That's our, that's our goal here. Our aim is to be conformed to the image of Christ, to be like Christ. That's the ones who God is accepting. The ones who desire. You may not, when Christ get back, you may not be like him, but you better have the desire to do it in your heart. Amen. You bet, that better be your aim, because if it ain't, you're in trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us, let us be standing in this midst. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, that even now, we don't look much like your children, but Lord, you call us your children. Because you're a God that calls things into being. And Lord, you're speaking what we're going to be when Jesus comes back. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that although sometimes I fail as being your child, you still call me your child. You call all us your children. And Lord, we thank you. Strengthen us when we're weak, build us up when we're torn down. Prop us up on every lean side. Lord, we need you to be our pillar of rest. Oh God, death has broken our ranks again, Lord. But Father, help us to understand and realize that death to the believer it's just a welcome man into your eternal presence. It's just separation, Lord, from this present evil world. Lord, and the ushering of us, Lord, into glory. And we just want to say thank you, Lord, as we remember, Lord, the life and the work of our departed. Lord, we ask that you would touch her husband as well as her kids and touch all of us, Lord, who she's also dear to, Lord. Lord, I lift up the Jackson family, his widow, sister Norma Jackson, his children, Lord, his three sons and his three sons, not, and his two sons and daughters by marriage. Lord, his sisters and brothers, that you would be with them, that you would comfort them, Lord. And Lord, I lift up my church family here at my Island Missionary Baptist Church. Those, Lord, who you have given me to shepherd. Lord, I pray your choicest blessing upon their lives. And Lord, I rebuke the coronavirus, Lord. I ask that you to rebuke it. Rebuke the devil's activity. Watch over our children, Lord. Protect them, Lord, even when their parents and their adults, Lord, who over their lives can't see them. Lord, we ask that you would be with them. Yes. It's in the precious, marvelous, master's, and highly exalted name of your son Jesus the Christ we pray. Now may the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest room and abide both now and henceforward. Let us all respond by saying amen. Amen, amen, amen.